Mm -hmm. Or the fire of humanity burn through your dick and, and into a future bloodline that somehow that extension, knowing that right now you're at the end of the tree and that it's going to die and then you know, it's kind of like a woman. Hey, enough for right. Enough for now. 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 About legacies and genetic code and all these all these notions are notions of the modern man and his civilization okay this whole idea of bloodlines and all this kind of bullshit okay a native monkey man wasn't worried about any of that crap okay he was just um, having a pleasure moment and he wasn't thinking about no baby making um, so yeah I, I, I natively didn't have any desire to have kids okay and I never really got caught up in the whole cultural identity thing and I had little moments little glimmers of moments where I might have thought about my ego and having a little Gary running around but those were little moments of ego and that's all they were and I diminished them pretty quickly and got them out of my fucking head and didn't worry about them anymore um, because I realized what the risk would be I say what, what would happen if I had a kid that was a little broken a little fucked up and I'm like it's my fault and I gotta take responsibility and then I got to figure out when I'm going to let the kid cut the grass and I'm going to figure out should I make the kid go to work and then I'm going to figure out oh, what, what am I going to do what am I going to do with this kid how am I going to raise a kid how the fuck am I going to decide what his consciousness is going to be I'm going to be responsible for his conscious identity holy motherfucking shit now I understand why my father didn't pay much attention to me because he probably just said holy fuck what do I do with this thing uh you know he had no fucking clue um because I would have no clue how to fuck my kid up. Because that's all I could figure. Well, how do, how do I fuck him up the least? I mean, that would be my strategy. How do I fuck the little bastard up the least? I mean, you know, holy shit. I mean, you know, it's got fail written all over it. I hate that. I hate doing things that have fail written all over them. You're a bold guy, right? I mean, you pick up the paintbrush and you paint some shit, right? I'm not a bold person. I don't just pick up the brush and paint some shit. I'm going to try to be a little more aggressive. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm really weak with paint, you know, I like use a little tiny bit and I make it go as far as I can make it go, you know, I don't waste any, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm timid, all right, and I find life to be something to be timid about, it scares the fucking shit out of me personally, personally, I've always found life a little bit horrifically horrifying and terrifying. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, get uh, coming to your uh, Saturday chat room. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. That's awful. I, I guess I've monopolized. enough uh, conversation with you and I want to jump in and do their thing and hopefully yeah I mean if you want to be less timid yeah I mean fuck man I use shitloads of pain but I, I'm a I'm a fool I'm a fool because I'm too bold I'm the fool that rushes in and I I fucked up and I haven't gotten uh, what it is I want because I'm a want machine and uh, you know, I like I said, I, I I like to give over. Your argument to you and like I would raise the kid on how not to fuck the kid up, but the advice that I think somebody gives to somebody that says like if you were looking at your dad and you had a kid and you're like. Look, Dad, I'm raising this kid because I'm trying to fucking mitigate fucking the kid up. What do I do, Dad? Don't beep, 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 do whatever we can, and we gotta add and mitigate. And I think all parents are like, that is a mental topic. 
what I think are all the future. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's, not, let's not get into that subject. Yeah. Well, I, already, I already talked about it earlier. I think uh, let's make really hick ass or orphanages. I think adopting is kind of bullshit because if I was a kid in an orphanage, I wouldn't want to be adopted by fucking Jerry Falwell. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of shit to adoption that sucks, so whatever. I'd rather just have really good orphanages. Really, 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 really good. Like triple Xboxes and everything. <laughs> Good Christ, turn your mic down. I just said I would make orphanages, right? I didn't say leave the orphanages just the way they are. Did I say that? No. I mean, every fucking time these people can't live. Listen when somebody says something. You have to actually listen to their fucking words. God damn it. Kick him, kick him, kick him. Oh, thank you. I'll ban him too. something about religion um, as because like like Buddha doesn't believe in a God in any epistemological sense like Christianity does and so forth but when when if one has a child perhaps the idea of religion being like a group of people that have inherited structures of advisements that have all pulled together, and then they've outlined themselves in a in a religion, and they've given that religion a name. But really, all it is are a series of advisements and gameplay to raise the youth in a specific manner that historically has yielded what I guess the common inherited you know, structure of what we consider a, a, a happy, healthy individual might be, one might say, well, they might use this, science this, as this fish. This, 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 I'm just saying. I don't, I don't know what you're saying. Religion comes with a huge liability, obviously. Yes, might makes right. Christianity only exists because it killed everything else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's to me, it's uh, organized tribalism. It's uh, sanctified tribalism, and it's anything that's excluded from it is is dropped to shit. I think that's why Jews went to the concentration camp because their style of living was taking control, and the people that were on the outside were too sick and tired. Hitler. Of that control Same happening. as the bonobos, you know, killing off the other competitors. Uh, you know, the weaker competition. Just kill it. It just solves the problem. Okay, well, uh, back to uh, Ms. Boston wants to jump in the game. Uh, uh, Heroin Church wants to jump in the conversation. I'm, I'm going to paint and listen. Turn my heater off and piss. <laughs> That's right, get shifty with it, that, 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 get shifty with it. <laughs> get shifty with it.
Well, I can always jump on Skype instead of playing this. But yeah, maybe I should. Maybe I don't know anymore. Thank you, hang on a second, 24, 25, 26. I don't know if I'm on here much longer. I'll just go for it, finish this off. Rose, an origami rose, but I don't think you can see it very well because the fucking lighting's bad. Go down, my man. <laughs> Uh 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 these little crappy shots in your video loops me off. Videos are spectacularly excellent. Testing, hello. Testing. You are here. It's just that nobody is here to disagree with you, unfortunately. Should I bail? Not Unless you want me. Yeah. <laughs> you look like the evil something. This is Easter in Lord of the Rings or something. It's like you're the you're the sixth episode or something. In the sixth episode, you get all the power. You reform the ring out of the lava shit. And, you know, pretty cool. Um, the fantasy island argument. Fantasy land argument. Hmm. Hmm. You're a bass player from Wasp. I think so. I believe Gary just lagged out. So got through back into the rescue with his rambling, babbling, babbling, babbling. Turn out to be such a winner. And get a pot. And get a pot as a winner. So I don't know if so can people is here? still in the room, but uh, when he was talking about imposing, how you can there's no such thing as the as imposing life and shit. What about the idea that consciousness of self is an imposition? And that when you bring somebody into the world through procreation, by imposing a consciousness, by putting consciousness into the world that is itself in a position. Hey, Cap, 
can't be said like that because some people can find enjoyment and some people might look back on their lives and say, hey, it was worth it. Some of the little moments were worth it, so you have to make it more detailed than that. I'm not talking about whether or not people find their life more good or bad. I'm talking about the consciousness itself and bringing that into the world. Is that an imposition or isn't it? It doesn't matter whether or not people enjoy their lives. It's whether or not they're the consciousness, the existence, like self, you know, self-knowledge of self, being fucking sentient and all that. Like that itself is an imposition. Not whether or not if consciousness is the product of a brain, and the brain is the product of having grown up from a single little sperm and egg meeting. And a sperm and egg and meeting is the product of us putting our dick in hole. Then, yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say that we imposed that consciousness. Pretty safe to say that. Let's see what I have to say. Now, um, my, my, my reason why I don't call it an imposition or I backtrack or I say that's just an adjective being used um, are, are a couple reasons, but uh, kind of like if you if if you're if you drop a rock into a swimming pool, uh, did you impose upon the rock or did the rock impose upon the swimming pool? Uh, it's almost like uh, the idea of uh, something like imposition comes with a negative connotation. So the majority of the language that's used in my in my take by the antinatalists comes with a negative connotation. Um, so spend a lot of time trying to change your visiting you Im impose on somebody's conversation it's like you're butting butting into it but when one happens to appear when one is developing and they become bigger it's like to say that they're imposed upon like who says that they're imposed upon other than like like it's always somebody that's living already that's calling it an imposition, and then the child inherits the word imposition. But to say that the child senses itself as an imposition coming into the world, I, I really don't think that's the case. I think they come the into the world. That's a sign that it, that it is a, an upset, it's a disturbance. Imposition is just the bringing it out of something that otherwise wouldn't have been desired. By committing the act of procreation, you're doing just that. I think it's quite simple. It's not about negative or positive connotation. It's whether a dir direct action of something brings about the of something else, and that's what the procreation clearly does. Well, because we know that we're sentient, then we call it unnecessary, but how about, this is what I mean by, instead of saying suffering, I say enduring, instead of imposition, I say adding. There's there's some value additive that's happening later on. So by testing your drinking water, it would just be adding on. And so, you know, when, when the imposition on my part, it would just be adding to the depth and flavor and nuance of your drinking water. <laughs> from the most benign sense, yeah. But from, you know, then that's where we learn the term imposition is from human to human lingual speakers interacting with one another. If you piss in a child's water prelingually and feed it to them, did you impose? Well, nope, kids just going to go down. It's really not, it's really not an imposition whatsoever. Right. Well, it is, it is carrying some sort of disease or something, or some other kind of condition, it's going to be imposed. All right. So, again, 
again, you're talking about a living child, and I'm talking about a non-existent child, and it's a decision that's made. So again, I mean, whatever. I mean, I don't know how much of life you take away volition from people's response. Ability. I mean, how much do, where, how, where do these exemptions go? How far do you take these exemptions from responsibility for the act being conducted and taking responsibility for it? I mean, let's just use imposition as a word for when you influence other people, okay? The fact that they will exist is a fact. Let's accept that. There will be will existence. They will be impacted by our behavior. I mean, how much exemption do you give them? How much do you exemption do you give us from responsibility? I, I will say add. I will say import. I will be as clinical and benign in my description as possible because imposition, kind of like the word parasite, has a negative connotation already. Now, if you can bring in another word that doesn't have a negative connotation, that's fine. But if you're going to impose the word imposition, right, if you're going to import the word imposition, automatically you've also imported a connotation. Well, you can undo the connotation, okay? It is always an imposition when you influence somebody else, right? Uh, Even if I give you, if I give you a Lamborghini, I'm sort of imposing on you in the sense that your life is now changed and you may get yourself killed, right? So, I'm just saying, let's just, I mean, what the way do you, if you can give me another word that is, you're not giving me words that are, equal, that are benign, okay? You're giving me opposite prejudiced words. No. So, you're, you're giving me words that don't have any cutting edge, so any you risk included in them. So, let's find a word that's not this, or not um, bestow, or not some, I mean, you know, doesn't bestow have a positive connotation? So we can't use that. I mean, let's find this neutral word and maybe we can agree on it. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying for the sake of this conversation, let's assume that imposition just means that you are now trespassing. You are now drawing straws for somebody else. You're imposing. That's why I use the word import or add. And when I say clinical, I'm trying to remove, I'm trying to be descriptive without without adding connotation and so I don't know if you could agree upon add but it sounds to me like you want to impose the connotation and because there's a certain ricochet going on with within these negative connotations within the argument and so I want a real risk to be appreciated I'm just saying the word add does not does not imply risk so the word add is kind of <laughs> bullshit <laughs> it's it, well the consequential ethic about you know the guy who loses his arm he has a bad day or in certain cases maybe it's not a bad day but consequentially it worked out if you're trying to impose a consequentialist ethic via always having a negative connotation that's that's what I see that you're doing Most because you you want to point to the negative risk of it because the import of child must be looked at as for They tell me, they tell me, they tell me, they tell me, no! Are negative and it's got to be accounted for because we're talking about in comparison to a fail-safe circumstance or a no-risk circumstance. These are the alternatives. So the, the point has to be, it has to be decidedly negative because it's the only negative potential is that exists in making this choice. There's yeah. no negative potential in not making the choice. Yeah. I mean, if you decide not to impose the risk, you've eliminated all the negatives. You call it being enslaved to the DNA molecule, right? As opposed to saying, well, the, the negative downside is that the DNA molecule is, is not survivable. Or the notion of, oh, the, the, the child, the risk of having this child will not be able to suffer a more comfortable life. That it might not move into a, a better zeitgeist, a better tomorrow, a better technological future. It's like, it's all of these things that you, it's the way in which it's framed. Uh, it, it's not forecasted, right? 
You'll frame it when it's convenient. But I'm sorry. sorry. I think you're just Yeah, you're damn right. I'm doing it the opposite. Yeah, that's right. You're imposing a bias in the opposite direction. The mental word that you really don't like, which is the fact that it's an unnecessary risk. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Look at you guys. What? Horse feeding. <laughs> it depends on what you're trying to do, but if you're trying to reduce or eliminate harm, which is the basis of the Benetarian argument, then it becomes unnecessary. If you're trying to progenerate a future, uh, a future uh, humanity, then it's an it, well, it would be an acceptable risk. It is considered an acceptable risk, and it's forecasted instead of framed. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could somebody through your kind of logic argue against the uh, manufacture of a nuclear power plant? I mean, would they have some right to argue that it's too high a risk, that it's not a justifiable risk, that the potential good doesn't outweigh the weight of the potential harm? I mean, by your logic, I wouldn't have any right to say it's an un you don't have a right to impose that risk on me. You don't have a right to put a nuclear power plant in your backyard and risk my welfare. Well, it's hindsight, right? It, okay, so it's hindsight. Oh, the nuclear power plant, these ones broke down. We don't want to build any more on the planet because it fucks up. And then, listen, oh, well, someone came up with a new technology. It's more fail-safe. Do we want to give them a break? Well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It, it seems like a, a hell of a risk to have that might damage our human population. It might damage... Uh, and what, what I'm trying to get to, though, is, isn't the argument that simple? I mean, if we take these will-be's and make them real, are we basically saying you don't have a right to do something with your life, okay, your baby-making potential, that is going to risk the welfare of these... The, the people I'm advocating for that, that, are going, that, that are going to be impacted by your action. So I'm basically saying you're taking an action that's above my risk tolerance. Okay? It's obviously not above your risk tolerance if you show up. Hey, I don't want to be here again. One way that's through Dr. Frankenstein making me. So again, I just don't see how you can defeat the basic premise that you really don't have a right to assign this risk. You don't have a right to draw straws, give me straw and say, well, too bad, you gotta be Frankenstein again. Well, it's interesting to talk about right in, in these contexts because like I said, I'll give it over. Like, okay, I don't have the right, now what else do I do? Am I going to do it anyway? Oh, well, it's the right. Now, am I imposing a nuclear power plant upon humanity? Like I said, all I can do is make the argument. I can make you say, okay, I get it. I don't want to be an imposer. All right? I can just make the argument and make you feel like an imposer. Right? Or at least make you think about it imposing. Or make you realize that you are basically doing that. You're going to draw straws for somebody else and they're going to live with your decision. So that's all I can do. I can't do any more than that. Well, look, the, he, well, once again, if you're going to point to the fiction or the non-identity problem, posing straws for something, you're pointing, once again, to something that's not, or the potentiality of it is, and if I have a child, I am at that point dealing with the risk, not before then. Right? Like, it's got to be whatever it is before the case. Other, see, it's a generative ethic. It's an ethic that's, that's working on shoulds and rights. And I'm just saying, look, the world does have nuclear power plants. It may, it may not be wrong, but uh, most of them are safe. Most of it works out. It'll really suck if, you know, Fukushima happens all over the planet. But Fukushima happened just like the elephant man happened, just like these other things happened. Like, the, it is a mitigated risk what you're doing, but <laughs> it's not cost effective, okay? So that's proven in the time, all right? Because what you pay in the long run to clean up those messes is preposterously high, and you would not you would have been better off not to have done it. So again, we're back to the better off not to have. Yeah, okay. yeah okay. well, the whole point is, is that the notion that we live and we die, and therefore the death becomes that big suffering 
or all the suffering added throughout life, that including the process of death. But if one's focusing on better to have not, one's already living in the place to make the evaluation yeah. and the comparison where another person would evaluate and say, it's the cycle of life, there's a longevity, there's a longevity. I don't play that game, but that's just a religion to me, okay? That's fine. People want to believe that, they can believe that. I'm saying that's mumbo-jumbo nonsense. Has nothing to do with, it. It has nothing to do with the maze game that we're in. It has nothing to do with the real risk imposition that exists. So again, you can't discount the risk by yeah. saying yeah, uh, the nature says I can do it. The DNA molecule gave me permission. Here's my license from the DNA molecule. It says it's okay. No, you can't do that. The DNA molecule does not say it's okay. There's no authority saying it's okay. The risk is real. You're going to assign it. You're going to do that. Okay? You, 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 you. Nothing else. You. Yes, and the reason is for the forecast. There's a difference between my DNA molecule, you know, throughout my ancestry's pre-Iron Age, and me, uh, you know, post-NASA, post-morphine uh, post age. There's, there's uh, a forecasting moving throughout humanity, and that is being evaluated by language speakers ever since we could, that things are moving in a particular direction. Yeah, it's got the bumps, it's got the dumps, it's got the suffering, it's got the shit, but once again, it's not about a static frame, it's about a spiral into the future, and it's with the assumption that somebody developed the internet, what is next, what's, you know, someone developed the light, someone developed all of this fucking shit around me, that's yeah. absolutely, you know, if I look at it as a shit mess, that's a fucking problem, because... Yeah, because what's <laughs> You've been taking a, a step back right off the pier with this crap, okay? I just, I just said no more religion, and you just pile on a big more big pile of religion. I mean, this is nothing to do with the real risk you're imposing. So again, to assume that your child is going to sit there and have that mumbo jumbo built up in their head, oh yeah, you're religiously negatively imposing the word imposition. What? Read them. Arena whip, 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 whip. Anti NATO is whipping, boys. What they be? Whoop, 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 I love pain pills. Pain pills love me. I love juices. This is lovely. I can't believe that they passed that citizen's detainee bill. That is complete nonsense. Okay, where are we? I gotta be coming to an end soon. Except for I whip them a little more. Whip them! Get them good. Mm -hmm. uh, so dirty whipping! And Daddy said it was a good idea, and great, great well, Daddy said... But the objective things are, I have a fucking metal doorknob and a locking door, and I just drank fucking coffee here late at night, when it should be dark outside, that could be a caveman with a... Right, 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 right. Um, so they must be there for a reason. I mean, that's all you're doing. You're just <laughs> because it's clear. I, I have a right to use it. I'm saying no, we don't want to do that. We have to come up with better excuses. Well, okay, look, I, I hate, like, when this house was built, it displaced some mice, right? It displaced some cockroaches. I understand that. That was a fucking, that was a, I'll say, oh, well, that was an imposition. Look what it did. It Same argument I've had for years. One of the most consistent mothers on the internet. See my Mr. Crabber videos when they're in private days. Push them out, right? I view theology. If you want to say that's religious, I agree with you to some. Oh, hey. ah. oh, my God. To some extent, but 
I also say it's happening. Problems. It's, it's you know, there's resources. <laughs> it's, reversing. it's reversing, okay? As soon as people get a little bit of brains and a little bit of civilization and get a little distance from religion, all of a sudden birth rates start declining. Now, that's uh, a real... That, that should give anybody who's poverty. thinking of needling some pause, and they should say, wait a minute, so the dumb people are the ones reproducing. Hmm. Yeah, that might be suspicious. That might indicate something. That's not a fact. The, not the a idea fact. of poverty, people, people in poverty, there's lots of theories as to why people in poverty have more kids, and a great many people that have kids are not necessarily following a religion, right? And a lot of them are in the hopes, doing it in the hopes of a better future. And once again, if you want to well, like well, the distractions is the point. Things. They have no better distraction and they have no better knowledge. So those are the two things missing. Better I'm just knowledge being your knowledge. saying once people are, are sophisticated, they can see that life as being more than being a, a you know cleaning up snot all day. They have they have a more elaborate agenda for their existence than you know cleaning up baby poop. Um, that's that's. Hey, come on, that's a portion. That's, that's, it's like growing up old enough to learn how to tie a tie. And, and, and the secondary... God, I like commenting on videos that people can't talk back. It's for fun. I like the fun of fun. It's fun. It's drooling. It's moving in what would seemingly be, you know, everyone's contributing. Well, I'm just saying those are positive forces. You know, I mean, if you think it's positive forces that have us at 7 billion people, I'd say you're completely idiotic, okay? We know those are negative forces, not positive forces that have held us to 7 billion people. I'll say that the anti-natalist argument is a zeitgeist that's appropriate for this time. I'll say it, it wasn't when we were down in pack tribes in, in other areas. It couldn't, it wouldn't even have, uh, I, I think, be imagined. It, it may be more in an existential way, you know, and so I'm just saying. Why don't you even pollute your, let's say you had a, a utopia, you know, you had your Garden of Eden, you and Eve. Why would you knock her up? Why would you get her pregnant? I mean, if you had a choice oh, not to get her pregnant. On. I mean, why would you want your the, the little fucking Cain and Abel monsters for? What the hell use would they be? Just because just you inherited the gay gene and you don't want to procreate doesn't mean I inherited that. I'm I'm unlucky. Your your uh, self ordered. You're, you you uh, ordered yourself appropriately to what it is you want. So congratulations. All these silly notions, why wouldn't you want to keep Eve as young as possible and keep her as interested in you as possible? Why would you want to give her a distraction and make her a kind of anti-penis? Uh, part, part of, I guess, the DNA extending the... the, the What you hear is not a test. What you hear is not a test. Yeah, even though it's only one eighteenth of your genes, and by the third generation, so there's you, only about two and you know, four percent of you in the in the in, in the fourth it's generation. It's Who the fuck cares, right? You're gonna disappear anyway. You're gonna get diluted out of existence. Okay, no, I I, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, I, I it, like I said, it's not it's the forecasting is one aspect, but if I were to continue in another description. There's something that you want to say. No, the, the the man just wants to hump this this woman, and it happens to make a baby. Well, that's a fine description, but I mean, look at other look at other monogamous 
or pluralistic tribal groups or groups of animals and say, oh, well, they, they are procreating and they're moving in groups and there might be something about the needing a group, right, that procreation as part of a genetic structure allows somebody to feel like, oh, I've, I'm in tune because part of my genetic structure moves better in groups and it moves better in like groups. I mean, and look, and I know, but look, don't, don't use nature as an example, okay, because there's just so many species where this isn't but the reality. The average male seal, and evolution you know, a elephant seal, for you. Uh, he never right. has sex his whole life. Okay, all right, because the alpha males get all the, they get all the pussy, and the rest of the males are just drones. I mean, they're just shark food. Genetically, they're meaningless. An alpha male. Okay, they're lions. brothers are going to get all the pussy, okay? The little brothers get shit. And it's like that in an awful lot of these social animals, okay? The alphas get it all. The, the betas get nothing. You're, you're describing multitudes. Yeah, no, I, I hear that, but I'm also thinking of schools of fish or birds of a feather flocking together. You get different species. Some yeah. fly Don't alone. Uh, you know, are they're more in the prey department or the predator department. Uh, and then you get the, the groups, the prey department, and they're moving together. Single-handedly whipping the crap out of the Antinatalus with a night. And they're different species, though the whole maybe maybe there's plenty kind of like the theory of why gay people uh, like what's what's the reason why gay people would be selected through natural selection? And one of my favorite theories that I heard is that their energies in life help the procreation and the survivability of nieces and nephews, and so it's carried on throughout the family. Yeah, yeah but, but they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not very, um, aggressive or useful in battle, so they really don't have a whole lot of that, oh, you, you know, I'm going to jump in front of the shark for you, kind of, <laughs> you know, they're like, ooh, it's got shark teeth, right? I mean, you know, come on, the gays aren't going to, 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 the gays aren't uh, and that that's been selected has to do with the fact that their their energies or their wisdom added to the group is a survivability. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's not get into that argument because that's just going to get, you know, somebody will say something too stupid like me. And uh, people will just be dragging that, banging me over the head with it for the rest of my life or something. Um, but yeah, no, gays are great. Fantastic. I just, I think it's it has more to do with some sort of alpha syndrome, you know, and that's, it's like the beta thing and the whole, like I said, I think it's just part of the mechanism of our biological heritage. Um, uh, you know, like I said, orangutans have it more obvious than any of the other apes. You know, there's one alpha and he gets, in, he gets big, he gets this huge head, he gets these big teeth. I mean, this whole thing happens to him because he's getting some. And the rest of the males turn into shrivel up. <laughs> you know, yeah, they, they start, you know, butt-fucking each other. Like you, like Anton, like... Uh, One of the betas slips off or an earthquake separates them and then a beta gets the hump. Whoever was on well, the side. Saying, side. Saying, saying, that's right. Things like that happen, but we know that they get distilled by the the whatever the the main population is is always going to dilute uh, them back into the lean, carry. so they're going to get swallowed up eventually. I'm just saying that's I'm more, I'm, I'm more comfortable with my theory yeah, of than sure. your theory. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. <laughs> yeah. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Well, that's what makes up fucking theories. You Oh no, that's the point, man, that's the point, man, that's the point, man, point, man, point, man, point, man, pill, pain pill, pain pill. You know, people are trying to, hey, there's a copy of me, what the fuck? And then it copied, hey, it copied itself, the fucker, what the fuck? And he just kept doing that and doing that and doing that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to say I am a DNA molecule. Like, I'm the totality of the expression of a DNA molecule. But then you're like, eh, you know, part of me's cultural, 
part of me is reactive. Part of me, like in your case, is go against these driving forces. Don't have any more fucking kids. You look at me, I'm not going to be me. So we're just the tank treads, we're, all the, we're the hardware, you know, built around the fucking molecule. Okay, the little sacred internal core, however you want to look at it, the seed, and we're the fancy shell. It's like the coconut, you know, it's got the inner shell and the outer shell and the husk, and yeah, we're built up a whole bunch of attributes, you know, we got this little brain and all this other crap, and it's all there just to keep the little DNA molecule alive. I mean, it, it really, we, we are just robots, okay? And at the core is the little DNA molecule, pulling all the levers. Like, where the center of a Tootsie Roll, our heart is who we what, are. What, what about the idea that you are actually something other than your DNA molecule, and that the theory is really wrong, and what it is is that the DNA I'll molecule on just on. travels uh, into your... Uh, into your oh, liver, oh, 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 right, and then it moves to your penis, and then it's shot out, and but the rest of you is an expression uh, from something else. All yeah, yeah, the cool. <laughs> <and it's laughs> <not feel good. laughs> I'm the husband. 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 I'm the well, no, I know, but I mean, I, it's like you don't walk around and introduce yourself as a DNA. Well, I'm oh, getting there. Right. I'm getting. I'm uh, getting more comfortable with it. Okay, yeah. I'm getting more comfortable with the idea of doing that. The I'm gonna change my I name. DNA molecule. I want to change it to the word human. <laughs> I want to turn it to the. I want to turn the word DNA to mean sentience. <laughs> 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 what don't you wash? I'd probably be fine with that. My hair. I'll wash it anyway. Oh, okay. Jeez. Will, golly gee, Willikers, I'm back to that exit mode. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Um, it's kind of late for painting, but yeah, whatever. I guess it's earlier where you are. Yeah, maybe. I can't see how to get you in. What is that? See, see how polite you were to me, Gary? Yeah, it's clowns playing dice. I like the dice part. That really intrigued me because, you know, I've been talking about dice a lot. And, uh, but yeah, no, it's an interesting painting. Reminds me of the dogs playing cards or something. Yeah. You know, it seems kind of relevant to the antinatalist argument in a way. Clowns playing dice. <laughs> yeah. But it might all be accidental, who knows. Like, just an accident. Oh, God. Try to find yourself. I thought I was going to be the horny guy, but yeah, he doesn't look much like me. Find yourself in where? Or horny in guy in there? Yeah, the guy with a horn, anyway. He had a horn on his head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, that had to be me, right? Horny guy. You're, you're the pickpocket I got right here, Gary. Now I'm picking your pocket right here. Oh yeah, picking your pocket. Nip, 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 nip. Nip, 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 nip. Nip, 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 nip. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll explain that. But yeah, I wanted to talk to this book. Yeah, I like the the po the the, the um, pierros are always blue and green. <laughs> yeah, very spocky. Uh, so it's good. Um, Poeskian. Yeah, it's a word I made up. Okay, like Poeskian, like po. Like po my leg. My po my leg. I'll be dip dip buttermilk. There's a salmon dip for everyone. Come to the party. Edgar Allan Poe guy, you know, but I was able to deduce that it was Edgar Allan Poe. I'm surprised no one else has done that. I mean, it just seems like a logical thing to do, you know, to say Poestian. <laughs> you know, but I don't know. I guess other people don't get that shit. <laughs> It'll be in the dictionary one day. Oh. A thousand years from now, unfortunately. 
Yeah, it's next to Spock X skin. Say Spock X skin doesn't work. Spock X skin. A bunch of other words that have no meaning at all. Well, my made up words have meaning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a clan with a clan and a clan and a clan and they're right here to that bullshit. And the clan and the clan and the clan. Ground to be videos. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was actually thinking of painting Da Spook Guy. I was saying, yeah, I gotta paint him as a clown. That's what seems like the reasonable thing to do. <laughs> so, that was what I, I had planned, but, you know, planning is whatever. You know, it's in, it's in my brain. I just have to get the paint out and shit. Find some suitable piece of shit to paint it on. Mr. Blah, 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 blah. Would you blah, blah, blah? I guess not. I got a show on January 7th. Stupid videos out there. But, you know, I guess they didn't put my name in the tags or something. I don't recall seeing it. Oops, I don't recall seeing it. I do have to do some more guitar videos. I think that was kind of funny. My To Be Serious video was pretty funny. Skinky cunt. She has a skinky cunt. Hey, uh, since, since I got you here, it's rare that uh, you and I get to have this little time together, Gary, this little marriage made in digital heaven. I get to talk to you, but uh, what's, uh, I mean, <laughs> like, what's what what motivates the skanky cunt description on To Be Serious. I mean, like, can you give us a synopsis of, like, like the basic outline and then, like, the real, like, what, why, why it's so fun to keep, like, twisting the dagger while it's in her gut? I mean, Gotta help me out here. Document 74. Go, Gary. It's your birthday. Gonna spill beans like it's your birthday. Cause I'm a pumper, I'm a jumper, I'm an argument thumper, rumper. Bring me to your town and deconstruct a foundation of your paradigm, of your paradigm. I don't care if you're a tall. I don't care if you're a thunderbird. I don't care if you're a death bot. I don't care if you're Gary, Harry, Gary, Lily, me, anybody, 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 blah, 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 Uh oh, shit. Look at me ramble getting a gap. Bullshit, I got. Okay, what do we got? Holy shit, man, I can't believe it. Three of these will never end. Oh, yeah, it's gonna end here pretty soon. Thanks for being patient, everybody. Look, it started with S and F, okay? The racist, crazy old hag. So I called S and F a skanky old cunt. Okay, because she's this racist, crazy old bitch, fucking butterfly whisper, nutball fucking hack. Anyway, and so to be serious, in, in typical manner, thought the conversation was about her, because she thinks all conversations are about her. And so she thought I called her a skanky cunt. And so then she makes this video going, He called me a genitalia! He called me a genitalia! He called me a genitalia! You know, she made a big scene out of it, like I called her a skanky cunt. I was like, fuck you, bitch, I didn't call you a skanky cunt, I called the old fucking hag a skanky cunt. Um, and, um, and so anyway, so that's how it sort of started. And then, so yeah, now I knew what I could get her with was, you know, I just started playing with the genitalia thing, and then the skanky cunt became more usable, and so now it's just, yeah, it's like, to be serious, it's synonymous with skanky cunt, you just can't separate the two now.
trick. I like genitalia. Yeah, right. It's right. quite funny. I mean, you know, genitalia is just a funny word. Genitalia. It's the alia that does it. By the way, I thought you were... Yeah, it's like something the school nurse would say or something. It's like some kind of spooky word that you'd never hear anywhere in the real world. Paraphernalia? <laughs> True enough. But you, you like you to like this, like, like mentioner is a skanky kind. You don't like to make like a twenty four minute video, like getting into like maybe even worse descriptions and not you know so just name calling, like really like speculating about her life and and uh, you know just really trying to gut the situation out, make it worse. I mean, you don't want to be misquoted. I, that might be a problem. But so whatever, I'm just saying, there's nothing I could do to that bitch. Okay, that she doesn't deserve, so whatever. I'm just saying, she is, you know, the trash talking is, the, she hasn't made a video in three years that didn't in some way, you know, make, take some kind of shot at Gary. I mean, she just can't let it fucking go. you got to put in the last word, don't you, Gary? No, him. No, yeah. No, <laughs> you can't. You can't be the man and let her get the last word in. Don't want the humiliated one. One that's defensive. Get the last word in. You want it is true. She is a woman. Yeah, it is true. Way to go, Gary. Way to go, man. Way to go, man. Hey, I, I don't care. I'm the Gary. I'm like, I can do what I want, but I'm the Gary. Yeah, you know, I'm the Gary! Um, but whatever, I mean, I that. should be white with red <laughs> spots. Fix that. It's it's like I'm there all over again. We're wearing his glasses because he's funnier when he's wearing his glasses. YouTube channel and thanks for coming to the mic, the mic chat session Saturday night. It's all about Das Poop. Das Poop owns this fucking chat session tonight. That's right. Yeah. Debate Das Poop. <laughs> Yay. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, but I actually should go, do you, do you have your like um, images somewhere? I mean, I know it's dangerous for real artists to put their work online, but I was just wondering whether they had any like thumbnails or something. I'm going to smell the website, man. Backreel.com. I'm mute you all. That's interesting. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he leaves a link. <laughs> That's spook on YouTube. It's not exactly a link. Is that going to work? Ah, there we go. Okay. Scratch, scratch, scratch! Oh, my bacon ass. Come on, this me down in Venice Beach. No, I don't live there. Just right yet. But come on, everybody. For a show. Sure. 
Baby, his baby, hit the tornadoes in the gravy train. The are pretty good. I mean, I guess you make up some of that crap as you go along, but, you know, <laughs> it starts off being one story, and then the story changes. Oh, I hope that's not your critique of my whole night. He's got a crazy picture of Stephen Colbert on here. Looks pretty good. Thank you. I don't know who that dude was. But clown he's... themed, of course. Complimenting me? He is. Clowns, clowns everywhere. But you have that real painting. I saw that one more real painting in one of his videos. My arse was showing. Okay. God, I gotta pause it. I don't believe this. I don't like scan the room and show everybody anything else. Like, can you show a few other things? Oh, Angela. What a great lady. Like on that little screen, it just seems like, <laughs> you know, it's hard to make it out. But, um, and I'm kind of like something that's not a clown. That's not a clown. 